What up, what up, what up? What up, prayer boys? What's up? What's up, prayer boys? What's up? It's your girl. Prophetess Verna London coming at you with another video. I done shampooed this head. You heard me. You got to respect this natural gangster. Huh? <laughs> what up? You going to suit up or shut up? Prayer warriors, what it do, what it do, what it do. I done shampooed this head, treated it, conditioned it, proteined it, put some protein treatments on it, a conditioner. So, me and my husband anniversary coming up um, on the 15th, and I'm waiting then to do my hair. So, I just put me a little natural updo up for right now. It didn't grow, it didn't got thick. And one time I wouldn't even wear it because I did not like this natural hair. I still don't care for natural hair. <laughs> but I try to make it do what it do since I had not cut all my hair. But um, it's going back, it's getting thick. I had cut it all off because I had um put some bleach on it, which I should have just did, you know, 20 volume, but... I try to do a little intensity to it, so I, it, I cut, I did it with 30, and it damaged it. Not bad, bad, but it's like took the curl, curl pattern away and stuff. So I had to cut it all off again and start all over. So it's it's growing, it's getting thick too. So it's growing. And my husband's like, don't you shouldn't relax it again, cause it's growing. I'm like, oh my God. But anyway, um, the Lord says the same. I live to see it be his will. April the 15th gonna be our anniversary and I'm gonna look cute. I got me some hair that I'm gonna put in there. But anyway, let's get into this video. Um, I'm gonna come with this video. I'm gonna be doing, talking about Paul again, but I'm gonna do the, the um, chapter 26 in X. I'm not gonna do all of it. I'm just gonna do 26. And I want to get a chance to read Romans chapter 1 as well. And then we're going to pray the word. Amen. Because the word is so important. Amen. The word, you guys. The word. The word. I mean, the word. It's going to be the only thing that's going to stand in these last days. If you have the word of God in your mind and in your heart. Amen. In your mind. In your heart. And you write it on the table of your heart when you hear that word and you will hear that word how it does. And it transforms your mind. It transforms your thinking. You know, people can offer you this and offer you that. But at the end of the day, you have to have a relationship with God for yourself. Because purpose and destiny cannot be bought. You can make money a trillion different ways. In so many ways to get financial breakthrough. But God say. I will give you the power to get the wealth. Everybody not going to get their wealth the same way. Everybody's wealth is not going to look the same because God knows exactly what we need. It ain't no get rich quick schemes. Amen. God will give you the power to get the wealth. It's so many different ways to get it finances because god say i will supply you every need i will be your manna every single day you know and god know how to keep us coming to him amen it's okay to sow seeds and you know you gotta return your tithes and sowing your seeds that's your extra amen when god tell you to sow you sow you return your tithes you give when he if you might be in the store he might say pray for this person grocery or you in the line at mcdonald's and he said pay you know he might tell you to pay for the person food in the back or you just do it out the kindness of your heart you know what i'm saying pay it for god say when you give to me give to me he wants you to be a cheerful giver unto him not unto man man do not have your blessings man cannot bless you man I'll give it to you and then turn around and throw it in your face but see when god do it and he give you the favor and he bless you it ain't that man can do about it god say i love a cheerful giving don't give it to me grudgingly and don't give it to me out of necessity don't necessity 
when you give it out home, I don't want to give it, but I'm going to give it. That's grudgingly. You doing something because somebody just asked you to do it. You know, you got this attitude like I'm looking right now. You put your mug on. You know what I'm saying? And then you do it out of necessity, out of a poor spirit. Oh, I'm going to do this because I need. No, don't do it out of necessity. Be a cheerful giver. Give to God because you love him. You know how you do for your kids or your spouse or a friend? You do it because you're doing this out of the kindness of your heart. God is your first love. He is the king of kings. He is Lord over your life. He woke you up this morning. He wants you to give to him because you love him, because you worship him and you praise him and you grateful to him, not because you want you him to send you a three thousand dollar check or you want five thousand dollars in your account. Yeah, all that is good and dandy, but at the end of the day, that word is gonna be what keeps you because it don't. I don't care how much money you got in your bank. I don't care how much money you got. Well, I don't care. None of that can get you into the kingdom of heaven. None of that can save your soul. None of that can bring you out of depression. Money can solve a lot of things, but it cannot get you into heaven. Money cannot buy your purpose and your destiny. That's on the inside. That's something God has already given you. God said, I give you the power to get the wealth. Wealth is not just money. Wealth is your family. Wealth is you having a, a, um, a right mind. Wealth is you living a righteous lifestyle. Wealth is you getting up repenting every day. Wealth is you having your finances. Wealth is you having your needs met by God. Wealth is that you know that you on the right path. Wealth is purpose and destiny and your gift. Wealth is you woke up this morning in your right mind. Wealth is you looking for a healing. And you know if I got this word in my heart that God is going to heal me. Wealth is that when your life begins to shift and transform. When you coming out of sin. When God going to bring you out in the late, in the midnight hour. When ain't nobody else there. And you could call on Jesus and you know he hear you because you've been getting in that word. You've been hearing that word. You've been listening at your prayer. You've been building your spiritual man up and nothing can shake your faith. Nothing can shake your faith. Amen. Let's get into this word. Let's pray. And remember, nothing can, nothing can, uh, you cannot purchase purpose and destiny because if you could you would have been had it a long time ago amen don't get it twisted do not get it twisted man can't do that for you i don't care you need that word that's all i can say you need that word you need the word of god let god reset your mind reset your thinking Reset the way you do things. Let him transform your life. Nobody can do it. God said, I will give you the power to get the wealth. Nobody can do that for you. They could offer you this and they could offer you that. But at the end of the day, salvation and glory and honor, it belongs to God. Man cannot take the place of God. Nobody can do that. Amen. So let's get into this video. We're going to read a few scriptures. We're going to pray that word. Amen. This time we're going by so fast. We eight minutes in the video already. Oh, man. Let's get into it. Okay. Yes, I'm chewing my gum. <laughs> all right. So we're going to do our prayer. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures and it's going to be our word. Pray these prayers over your life and listen at the word of God. Listen at the word. It's the word that is important. It's the word that is going to keep you in these last and evil days. People can offer you many things, but only God can offer you salvation and your right to your spiritual inheritance. The right to walk in holiness. The right to be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Because we serve a holy God. 
We serve a righteous God. And God will let no man take his glory. God said, I give you the power to get the wealth. Don't get stuck on fame and fortune and miss out on what God really has for you. He said, because seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. So many times we go after the things first and we want to put God on a back burner until we need him out of necessity. You don't want nobody to do that to you. Every time I come to you is only when I need something. Only time I come around you is when I need something. Only time I come and I call you is when I need something. And the minute you can't do it, I have a problem with you. No. God wants you come to be a cheerful giver. He wants you to give your worship freely. He wants you to give your time freely. He wants you to love on him freely, not because of what he can give you. It's a trillion different ways to make money. It's so many jobs and businesses out here. We have our hands that it's so easily not to get the tangible thing. That we forget about the spiritual thing and we put God on the back burner until something happens. And you want to call on him when you need him. God going to begin to turn a deaf ear when you just begin to call on him when you need him or you want to use him. God ain't your sugar daddy. Or people want to just get up and do stuff because they want to show off and like it's fame and it's fortune. This ain't no fame and fortune. This ain't no fortune telling. This is the word. This is the king we talking about. We talking about the creator. The man that woke you up this morning and started you on your way. The one that you called on in the midnight hour when you are in need of a miracle, a healing, a blessing, a way out. When you are searching and you are seeking for your loved ones, when you lost someone, when something devastating has happened. Just like this pandemic, we had no other choice. You had to lean and depend on God. If you did not lean and depend on God, people was committing suicide, killing their kids, killing their wives, molesting and raping kids and just doing all sorts of evil, wicked, and hateful things to their family or anybody that got in their way. It's not about the tangible. It's about your faith and what you believe in. The shift has taken place. The shift is here. And you better serve God whole, not better. Excuse me. You have to choose to serve God wholeheartedly for the right reason. Not because you want something tangible. Or you want to be so rich. My God is rich and powerful. And he owned everything. Nothing was made without God. He is my everything. That's what my spiritual inheritance is. It's not in this world, worldly stuff, because all this stuff going to pass away, but it's going to be the word of God that's going to stand. Don't get it twisted. Money can be got. I did say got. That's that Ebonics. Money can be got. Money can be earned. Money can be established many different ways, many ways. And I'm talking about honest, the honest way. But what about your soul? 
What about your spiritual man? What about your purpose and your destiny in the gift that God has on the inside of you? What about this word? What about your God? Have you forgotten your first love? God said, I give you the power to get the wealth. But don't forget when you get it, where you came from. So many people get blessed and get financial stability till they start thinking they all that in a bag of chips, Lay's, sour cream, Ruffles, Doritos, what you like. They think they all that in a bag of chips. Then they begin to look down on other people as if the word belongs to them and only them. The devil is alive. God died for whosoever will. I don't care if you're sitting on a mountain with 20 houses and 20 of me just throwing it all around. You ain't my God. You don't get the glory over my life. God gets the glory. Because at the end of the day, if I leave and I leave this place today or tomorrow, where will my soul abide? Where will I spend where will I spend eternity? Where? Choose ye this day. Who you will serve. God wants to fill you with the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Will you allow him to come in and you be filled? Let's get into this word. Amen. I'm going to make sure my watch is off. Amen. Let's see how many minutes we have. 17 minutes in. Okay, I'm going to read um, a scripture. We're going to pray this prayer. Prayer, amen. 2 Peter, verses 8 and 9. Lord, Father God, we come before you in prayer as we pray the scriptures. And we ask you to forgive us for our sins. We ask you to create, 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 create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Renew a right spirit on the inside of us. Wash us with your blood. Purify us, Lord God. Purge us with his heart. Purge us with your his heart, Lord Father God. That we may be whiter than snow. Because when you come back, you say you're coming back for a soul without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. Second Peter 3 and 8. But beloved, be not arrogant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness, but in long suffering to us were, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance in the name of Jesus. Now I want to go to Revelations um, chapter 3, verse 20. And I'm going to read um, 20, 21, and 22. Revelation chapter 3, verses 20, 21, and 22. Behold, I stand, and this is Jesus talking because it's raw and read, and I'm reading the K, the King James Version. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, S-U-P, and he with me. He will dwell with him. And he will, will dwell, I will dwell with him and he will dwell with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even, I, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Proverbs 6, chapter 16 through 19. My God, that word is so important, you guys. That word, that word. Proverbs chapter, chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. These six things do the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Lord, you hate a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that sheds innocent blood. Lord, you hate a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift and run into mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. God is not the God of confusion and mess and wicked imagination and swift and feet that be swift and run into mischief. Amen. Just like everybody is talking about all this foolishness. Everybody won't got their opinion about this and that. Just, just stirring up confusion and discord among brethren. It ain't a black thing. It ain't a white thing. It's a wicked thing. Is confusion, is mess, and God hated it. It's evil in his eyes. Go and read those chapters. Now we're going to go to Acts chapter 26, and I'm going to read the message version of that because it breaks it down in itty bitty pieces where even a baby can chew it, like baby food. And then you can go and read it in your own time. Amen. Lord, Father God, we thank you for that word that it penetrate our hearts and our soul and that we return to our first love and that we, when we give it to you that we don't give it grudgingly or out of necessity but out of a heart of love and gratitude because of who you are and whose we are that I pray that this prayer go before you as a sweet memorial. And Lord, as I decrease you, increase in me. Let the comforter arise. Let the Holy Spirit sit on me. Shift our thinking and our mindset. In the name of Jesus. All right, Bible scholars, forgive me if I mess up these words, amen, because I'm not perfect, nor do I, perfect means mature in the Bible, but I don't speak every word perfectly when I'm reading this Bible, because the Bible has, I mean, these names, and it's so profound, and it's so prophetic, go and look the words up, read that word for yourself, amen. It says, okay, now we talk, still talking about Apostle Paul. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Lord Father God, write the words on my tongue. Give me the tongue of the learned. Give me the words of a ready writer. 
Move Vernon out of the way and let Prophetess Vernon London come forward in the fivefold ministry. Let me speak only what you allow me to speak. Say only what you tell me to say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. I'm going to take my shoes off because I'm on holy ground. Take my slippers off and get comfortable. Amen. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before three. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. That's how it's reading. Whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be ex especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth. Which was at the which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem. Now all the Jews, no, say I'm sorry, y'all. My manner of life from my youth, which was at first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know know all the Jews. All the Jews know that which knew me from the beginning. They knew him from the beginning. If they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. Unto which promises our twelve tribes unto which promises our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself, that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punish them oft, O-F-T, in every synagogue, and compel them to blasphemy, and being exceedingly mad against them, I prosecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, Whereupon I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven and above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And we were all falling to earth. I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why prosecuted thou me? 
It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. This is Jesus. This is God talking. Saul, Saul, why prosecuted thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? <laughs> and he said, I am Jesus, whom thou prosecuted. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen. And of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. That's Jesus talking to Paul. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but Show first unto them of Damascus. But show first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea. And then to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? We are the Gentiles. We are the Gentiles. That they should repent and turn to God and to do works meant for repentance. That they should repent and turn to God and do works meant from for and meant for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. That Christ should suffer, and that he should be the and that he should be the first that should that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and unto the Gentiles. We are the Gentiles. And as, and as he thus spake, 